Okay, in this video we're going to look at something called the Absolute Convergence Theorem and see where it fits in with all the other tests that you've had so far. Now, it looks like this. This is the way it reads, but let's kind of run through each part of it and see what it is. Now, initially you'll have this. The idea is you will be given a series. So this summation of a sub n, and I'm going to go ahead and just put original right here. This is going to be the original series that you're given in the problem. So you're given uh, some kind of an original series. Now, what's unique about this is that some of the terms in the series are positive, some of them are negative. So this whole absolute conversion thing really applies to series that have negative numbers in them combined with some positive. So that's the original series. Now, the plan will be this. If you're given an original series that has positive and negative numbers in it, then change it into a series that only has positive numbers in it by taking the absolute value. Then, if you can show that this new positive series converges, you can conclude that the original series has to converge. So that's kind of the gist of it. But let's take a quick look kind of graphically at what all this looks like. And let's suppose that we did this. Let's just take, suppose the original series and just to give it a number, let's suppose it was this. So a sub n, and I want to find the summation of this thing. <clears throat> it's equal to, and I'm going to put these dots up here. And suppose I did it, and it looks like this. So some of them are positive and some of them are negative. So this is what it looks like. So the first term is a 2. The second term is a minus 1. The third term is a plus 1 half. The next term would be a minus 1 third. The next term is a plus 1 fourth, and so on. And it goes on. So what this is, this is the original. It looks like this. So it's an alternating series. Now, in general, this is true. If you have an alternating series, it's usually fairly easy for an alternating series to converge. And the reason for that is this. When you add the points together, <clears throat> all the negatives take away, <clears throat> all the positives add to it. So this thing might do this. It'll go, <clears throat> I've got a positive, next term's negative. So it goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So in general, it's fairly easy, <clears throat> and I think I'll just go ahead and write that right here. If you have, this will be a, a series with negative terms, and in general, it's fairly, and I think I'll just put easy for a series with negative terms to converge relatively easy. Now suppose you had uh, the absolute value of that series. So here was the original series. So now suppose you did this. You took uh, the absolute value of that series. What effect does that have? And all that really does is everything that's negative becomes positive. So this would be 2, and rather than minus 1, it's going to be plus 1, then plus 1 half, then plus 1 third, and so on. So everything turns positive. Now from a graphical point of view, what it does is this. Every dot down here that's negative will switch up here and become positive. And when you do that, it's going to look like this. So you'll actually get this. We'll turn out the blue ones here. You'll actually get this red series of dots. So the absolute value of this series, it's a positive series in which all the terms are above the x-axis. Now it's usually more difficult for a positive series to converge than it is for an alternating series to converge. And the reason is, each one of these terms, they're all positive. So if you start summing them up, they add to the total. And if you just kind of picture the graph, this thing would go up. And it may go off to infinity and diverge. It may level, level off and converge. But in general, it's more difficult for the red dots to converge than it is for this one. So I'm going to call this, uh, this is kind of the, what I'll call the hard series. And this consists of all positive terms. So again, um, let's put the blue dots back on here. So if the series alternates, it's pretty easy to go. So the idea on this, if you can show that the positive series, the more difficult series, converges, then it's easy to show that this one converges. And one of my students a long time ago came up with this, and I think it's a pretty good comparison. The idea is, suppose you were picking up weights. Suppose you wanted to suppose that the, this A series was like a five pound weight. So you had a five pound weight. Suppose that the more difficult series was a 10 pound weight. Now the question is, can you pick up the five pound weight? Well, if you walk over and lift a 10 pound weight, then surely you can pick up a five pound weight. So the idea is prove that the more difficult thing is true and you've uh, proved that the more easy thing is. Now, a couple of words before we get out of here. Here's some possibilities you might run across. What the absolute conversion theorem says is this. If, this, if the absolute value one converges, in other words, suppose we had this one, we'll put it right here. Suppose this one converges. 
So if the absolute value one converges, then you're guaranteed that the original one converges. So if both series converge, <clears throat> then the following is true. If the original one and the absolute one both converge, that's called absolute convergence. So if you get this, this means that both of them converge. Now the next possibility, you might have a case that does this. The original series converges, but the absolute value series diverges. So if the original one converges and the absolute value series diverges, then that's called conditional convergence. So you'll have conditional convergence. And <coughs> conditional convergence. <coughs> okay. So if the original series converges <coughs> and the absolute, if they both converge, it's called absolute convergence. Uh, if one of them converges, or the original one only converges is called conditional convergence. Now, the last possibility is this. Suppose that both of them diverge. So suppose that this one diverges and this one diverges. If they both diverge, then they just both diverge. There's not a word for that. So anyway, your three words on this is if both of them converge, they converge absolutely. Then the original one converges absolutely. If both of them, if the original one converges and this one diverges, then it conditionally converges. And then the last possibility is both of them diverge. And then before we actually work some problems, let's try one more thing, and let's look at a couple of uh, rules that will show you where to use this thing. Um, so let's go to this. Now the idea is, <clears throat> just to give you an idea of where we are so far, <clears throat> you've probably had this. Uh, all the early tests that you ran were positive series tests, and that just means that all the terms were positive. We can kind of show it like this. The first term was positive, 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 positive. All the terms in the series were positive. Now, if that's the case, you had a whole series of positive term tests you could use to prove convergence. And just to kind of remind you of some of these, you had things like the P-series tests. Uh, you had both of the comparison tests. So you could put a comparison test in here. Um, you had the integral test. So you could do the integral test. But remember, when you, all these tests were only true if the original series was positive. It couldn't have any negative terms at all. And in a way, you can kind of put this. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and throw the geometric in here. Uh, because as long as the ratio, if R was positive, then the whole thing would be positive, and it could look like this. So actually, you could toss a geometric in there, too. Anyway, if it was all positive, you could use any of these tests, your choice, to solve it. Then, if you follow the same progress that most courses follow, the next thing you'd bump into would be the alternating series test. And it looks like this. You've got a plus, a minus, a plus, a minus. And an alternating series, every other term changes sign. Minus and so on. Now, if that was the case, you probably just got through with something called the alternating series test. So you had the alternating series test. And you could use that test to show this. Now again, kind of like the geometric one, just kind of a special case, because you could also use the geometric test if it turned out that the ratio was negative. So you got a couple choices here. But anyway, you had a specific series that did this. But remember, uh, the alternating series test only worked if it went positive, negative, positive, negative. Every other one changed sign. Now, the last case, and this is where this... Um, absolute convergence theorem comes in is this. Suppose you had a series that changed signs, but not strictly every other term. So it might do something like this. Suppose you had a minus, a minus, a plus, and then you had a plus, a plus, then you had a minus, a couple more pluses, three more minuses, and then another plus, and a couple minuses and stuff. So the idea is you've got combinations of pluses or minuses, but they are not strictly changing every other one. So now, if the original, if your series looks like this, suppose this is the summation of a sub n, which test can you use? Well, since they're not all positive, you can't use any of these tests to all appear at all. So all the positive tests are out. And looking at the original one, uh, it's also not alternating, so the alternating series test is out. So what this means is, at this point, you're kind of stuck, and this is where the absolute convergence test really shines. 
So what it says to do is this. You will test for absolute convergence. And what that means is, rather than all you're going to do, if this series right here was a sub n, you're going to find the absolute value of it. So you'll find the summation of the absolute value of a sub n. And what that does, it takes all these terms and turns them all to positive. So whenever you take the absolute value, that's going to be the effective. You've got this whole thing now where it used to have mixed terms. Now it's got positive terms. But now what do you do? Well, now that you've changed it to an all-positive series, uh, you can do this. You can go back up, and now you are eligible to use any of these rules. So the idea, you're interested in this original test here, but you change it to an absolute value, which makes the whole series positive. Uh, originally, you couldn't use any of these rules. Once you change, take the absolute value of it, now you can use any of these. So use any of these rules that you need to to show that this thing converges. And going back to our original rule, here's what it would look like. Is you were given um, an original series right here. Uh, and you'll change it into an absolute value series. Show that that absolute value series converges, and then you can conclude that this one. So back to our thing over here. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to show that this one converges. If you can show that the absolute value converges, then you can conclude that the original converges. So the original series converges. And not only does it converge, but it converges absolutely. Both of them converge. Absolutely. So the real strength of this thing is that it's a way of solving series that have negative numbers in them, but are not strictly alternating where you can't use that. So anyway, that's going to be kind of our approach. So now with all that, let's finally get around, take a look at, at some examples. And this is actually a fairly easy rule to use. So let's try a couple. Now the first one, we'll look at three examples. First of all, where it's absolutely convergent. Second one will be where it's conditionally convergent. And the third one will be where it's um, divergent. Okay, now the approach on this is this. We'll go back to our rules. And what the rule says is, um, given an original series, start by trying to figure out whether the po just the positive series converges or not. So what I'm going to do is this, is the original series is this thing right here. I think I'll put it in, uh, so this is going to be, so that is A sub N. Now what I want to know is this, I want to find the absolute value of A sub N. And all that would be, would be the absolute value. Now again, if the original A sub N is this, divided by N squared, then Whenever you find an absolute value, all it really does, it just eliminates the switch. So this will turn into 1 over n squared, and that's going to be the absolute value of a sub n. So I've now got the absolute value of a sub n. Okay, now back to the rule. So what the rule says, you were given this series that had some negatives in it. You change it into this series. Now the next step is go ahead and evaluate this absolute value series, this positive series, to see if it converges. So I'll go back to this, and I want to test um, the absolute value of a sub n for convergence. So I'm going to test the absolute value series. Now to do that, you can use anything you want to. And <clears throat> I think what I'll do is I'll set this thing up, and I want to find the test as n goes off to infinity. So I'll find the summation of 1 over, actually not summation, limit. Let me back up real quickly on that. I want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now, to find this, what this is going to actually be, this is going to be a p-series test. So if you look at this thing, it says, say, well, if I go way off to infinity, uh, the summation of that thing is going to go, uh, it'd be 1 over n squared, but again, the p series, it looks like this, 1 over n to the p power. If p is greater than 0, or greater than 1, in that case it is, then this means that this thing converges. So it's going to converge by, and we'll state the test that we use, it's going to converge by the p series test. 
So you've showed that the absolute value of n is going to converge. Now back to your rule. You're, basically, you're done. If you can show that the absolute value of the series converges, then this rule says that the original series also must converge. So once you showed that the absolute value converges, now you can show that just means that the original series also converges. So the original series converges. And not only does it converge, but it actually converges absolutely. So if the original series converges and the uh, absolute value series converges, if both of them converge, it converges absolutely. So that's what this one looks like. Now let's go back and try another problem. And in this one, this is going to be conditionally converged. And it looks similar to it, but rather than having n squared, suppose you just add in. But let's run through and use the same test. So what this one's going to look like <coughs> would be this. First of all, this is a sub n. That's the original series. But what I want to do is to test the absolute value series. So what's that one going to be? Well, that would be the absolute value of the original series. But again, what the absolute value does, it just eliminates this positive and negative switch here. So that's going to turn into 1 over n. <coughs> um, and that's going to be equal to the absolute value. So that is my absolute value series. Again, back to the rules. <coughs> um, I started with this, and I found an absolute value series. If I can show that this absolute value series converges, then uh, I'll be able to show that the original series can. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so what I want to do is to test the absolute value series for convergence. Now to do that, I'm just, again, going to do what I've done before. I'm going to find the limit, the P-series test, as n approaches infinity. I've got 1 over n, but that's like having 1 over n to the first power. Now again, what that is, this is a p-series, so this would be by a p-series test, and the way the p-series test reads, as long as this exponent is greater than or equal to 1, or pardon me, less than or equal to 1, then the series would diverge. If it's greater than 1, then the series converges. Well, this thing's equal to 1, and what that tells me is that this series diverges. In other words, I've just showed that a sub n um, diverges, by the p-test. Now what does this mean? Well, let's go back and look at our, our rules here. So if the absolute value series converges, you, can, you have proved that the original series converges. But in this case, you've got to cross this. If you try the absolute value series and it diverges, then you can't draw any conclusions about the original series. Maybe it converges, maybe it diverges. So you really have to go on and try a second test. So if the original series converges, great, you're done. If the original series diverges, now what you have to do, this is kind of like step one, now you'll have to go to step two. So if it doesn't converge on step one, there's still a possibility that the original might go on. So now you have to go back and test the original series. So I'll test a sub n. So what that one's going to look like would be this. And I think in this case, this is an alternating series test. So what I want to know is, does this thing converge or not? Now what this is, recognize, when if I have to leave the negative one in there, now this is a alternating series test. So I can do uh, this. I can go back and Since I've got an I can actually use the alternating series test. So again, what is a reminder, what is the alternating series test? Well, it says this. If you have an alternating series, you can show that it converges if these two conditions are met. You've got to show that uh, the limit of the uh, sequence goes to zero, all terms are approaching zero, and that it's decreasing. So let's go back and see what that looks like. So now, using the two tests, this would be step one. I need to show that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. Now also, just a reminder, uh, when you use the alternating series test, it's like having minus 1 to the n times 1 over n. 
and you only use the positive part. So I'll use 1 over n on it. Now again, I want to know, is this thing approaching 0? So if I take the limit as this goes to 0, um, the limit of this thing is approaching 0, so it passes the first part of the test. This is true. And what that means is that <clears throat> You're trying to show the series converges. It passed this first part. This is true. So now you go on and check the second part. If it passes both parts, then the alternating series converges. So uh, let's go. This was step one. And now let's do step two. And what this is going to be, it's you need to show that 1 over a, let's put it, 1 over n plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n. And again, by the test, you're actually just going to show that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n. And when you do this, um, as you let n go to infinity, uh, the denominator on the right is n, the denominator on the left is n plus 1. This denominator will always be bigger than this denominator, so this fraction will always be smaller than this fraction, so that is true. So what you showed in this is that the original series converges. So in this case, the original series converged. So what you got is this. It's that situation. If the original series converges, but the positive series diverges, then that means that it converges, and you can put your conditional. So if, if the original series converges, but this one diverges it. But again, just remember, um, if you start by, let me go back to rules, if you start by trying to show that the positive series converges and it doesn't, then you have to switch to part two, which is okay. Then you go back to the original series and see what happens on that one. So anyway, uh, in this case, you showed that the original series uh, converges conditionally. <clears throat> now the last possibility is, um, we'll go ahead and just stick it up here. The last possibility is, suppose it's divergent. Now again, let's try our test and see. So first of all, I'm going to try the absolute value. This is the original series right here. So the original series is here. That's a sub n. And I want to find out this, what happens to the absolute value if I change it to a positive series. Now if I change it to a positive series, that just knocks out this part right here. So it would just be 3n plus 1 over 5n. And what this is, this is the absolute value series. So again, um, first of all, I'm going to test that absolute value series and see what, whether it converges or not. If this one converges, I'll know automatically that this one converges. If this one diverges, then I'll have to test this one separately. So first of all, I'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n plus 1 over 5n and Again, I've got a first-order polynomial on top, first-order polynomial on the bottom. So the limit of this thing is going to turn out to be 3 fifths. Now what I'm doing here, I'm actually doing an nth term divergence test. Because the idea is if I can show that the limit of the function as you go way off to infinity is equal to anything other than 0, what that means is that this thing diverges. So uh, the absolute value of a sub n diverges and it diverges by the nth term test for divergence. So the nth term test for divergence. So I've showed that the absolute value one uh, diverges. Now the fact that the absolute one diverges, now you've got to move on to the second step and show what happens to the original one. So we'll do this. So the first step was to figure out what happened to the absolute value one. So since it failed this, now I've got to test this one. Now again, that also is an alternating series test. So I'll do an alternating series test on that, which consists again of two parts. Show that the limit of the thing is approaching zero, and if each term is bigger than the term in front of it. If you can do those two tests, you can show that it uh, converges. So let's try it. So step one of the alternating, step one of the alternating series test is to show that the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity 
is this thing approaching zero? So we'll find the limit of 3n plus 1 divided by 5n as n approaches infinity of this. Now again, it's actually the same thing we had before. Uh, it's The n's will cancel out. You'll be left with 3 fifths, which is not equal to zero. So this is false. It did not pass the first step of the alternating series test. So it failed this test right here. Now you might remember when we did alternating series. If you have an alternating series and it fails the first step of the alternating series test, well that test is exactly like the nth term test for divergence. So if it fails this test, that means that the series, the, the original series, diverges and it diverges by the nth term divergence. So the nth term divergence test. So in this case, the original series diverged, the absolute value series diverges, and so the only conclusion right here is that both of them diverge. So again, it could be that if they both converge, they are absolutely convergent. If only the original one converges, then it's conditionally convergent. And finally, the last possibility, it's possible that both of them could diverge and they would be uh, just both divergent. Now finally, let's take a look at one last thing that might help kind of summarize the whole thing. There's really four possibilities and let's just kind of run through them all. So the idea is, now the first one, this very first one, this is the absolute convergence theorem. It says if the if the absolute value series converges, in other words, if the positive series converges, then the original series must converge and you have absolute convergence and that was it. So it's pretty easy. So if the original one converges, or pardon me, if the absolute value one converges, then we'll put original right here, then the original must also converge. And that's the original theorem. But a couple of things are not true. No. So suppose you test the absolute value one, and it diverges. Well, you can't claim that the original one diverges. You actually have to do a couple of different tests. So this was your test here. If you tested this and it was true, this one converged. If you test this and it diverges, then you have to move on and do some more work. So then you go on to what I would call step two. So in this case, one step and you're done. But in this case, step two, you've actually got a poss couple of possibilities here. If you now, if the original one diverges, then you need to test um, the original. So summation of a sub n. And let's suppose that it does this. If you test this one and it converges, then your end result is that if the original one converges and this one do doesn't, then you're going to have conditional convergence. So you've got conditional convergence here. Okay, next possibility, if you tested this one and it diverged, then all that means is that both of them diverge. So in this case, you've got both of them diverge. Now, there's another way of going about this too. Let's do that. Yeah, uh, you can, given the original one, you can first of all test the positive series, the absolute value series, or you can also do it this way. Given the original, you can start with the original series and then figure out something about the uh, absolute value series. So in this case, this is going to be what we'll call step one. So suppose you decided to start with step one, and it reads like this. If you can show that the original series diverges, then the absolute value series, the positive series, must also diverge. They have to. So again, if the easier one diverges, then the harder one must also diverge. And you'll know that both of them diverge. But suppose you did this. Suppose you started with the original one, and this is going to be step one, and the original one converges. Well, just because the original one converges, then the positive one might either diverge or converge. So this is also going to be, we'll call it a step two. This is going to take a little more work. So these two right here both take a second step. And again, 
what you'd have is this. So if the original one converges, then you can test the absolute value one. And let's suppose that it converges. So in this case, you would have the original one converge, the absolute value one converges, you would have absolute convergence. So let's put absolutely converge. Then the other possibility, if you tested this one, absolute value one, and it diverged, then what you have, the original one converges, this one diverges, you would have conditional convergence. So conditional convergence. Okay, so really there's a couple ways you can do it. <clears throat> there's four possibilities here. Given an original problem, you can either start by testing the absolute value one first and then draw some conclusions about the original one, or you can start with the original one and then draw some conclusions based on this, depending on whether they converge or diverge. So any one of these four would work, and it's your choice which one you go. Uh, if they both converge, they're absolutely converging. If only the original one converges, then you've got conditional convergence, and if both of them diverge, then you've got this. So anyway, there's a kind of an introduction to uh, the absolute convergence theory.